Because you're crippled or you're broken. Nobody out there is going to love you. My grandpa had five kids and grandkids. And that's the thing you got to remember is that God will use anybody to do something great. And the brokenness or the state of our bodies has no effect on the grace and the glory of God. And once we cry out to Him, God moves. If you have the faith of a mustard seed to believe that you can move a mountain, God moves. And He's the Mount Zion. That's the thing. He comes and He will move and He brings His suit of many colors and He clothes you in it. He clothes you in it. And you say, well, Who's going to clothe me in it? God himself. And he will use a broken person with missing part of their mind. He will use a person that is broken in a wheelchair. He will use whatever God chooses to use to glorify the mightiness of his grace and love to all those other people who thought, how could God love you? You're broken. Let's pray. And it's like, wow, what are you doing? You know, that's the thing. Sometimes we hurt their feelings. Hey, let me hurt your faith. Let me hurt your feelings because, gosh, I didn't have the power of the living God. That's the thing. Jesus Christ heals people. Men and women, we don't heal nobody. We are men and we are women. Jesus Christ went out and healed all those people. Yeah, and when somebody fails to be Jesus, they get upset and they blame the victim. They blame you. When a, now, now that your body, Satan has attacked your body for 27 years of your life, now I'm going to come and attack your faith in God that has rose you up every day, that, that gave you the hope. To stand up every morning and say, I don't care how much pain I'm in, I'm going to get up because I have a friend here. And if I don't get up and take care of my little friend, who's going to take care of her? And your little friend wakes up every morning by the grace of God. I'm going to go take care of my, my mama. Because who's going to take care of her? And that's God and the grace of God. How He is the love and the spirit of love, hope, and faith. Hope, love, and faith. God loves you just enough to, you know, more than enough for you to be in that spot, me, me, because the glory of God isn't defined by our physical abilities. Is defined by our faith. And what, where does our faith come from? Somebody who loved me enough to give me the hope to wake up in the morning, no matter how painful it was. You know, there's many people out there in the world who are got MS. MS is a thing that attacks like your brain and your spinal cord and it begins to eat holes in your brain and pretty soon you lose all bodily function. That's the thing with God and Jesus. You know, like the book of Revelations, it, it, there's all this wrath being rained out. Yeah. Yeah. Are gonna die one day. And we can die from war. We can die from famine. We could die from disease, sickness, all those things. But in the end, there's none of those things can take away from God's grace or, or the faith of God's grace being in our presence while all those things are happening to us. I could stand in the fire 
of Nebuchadnezzar's furnace. Because there's one likened to the Son of God there. Yeah, that's you. You're just like the sons and daughters of the living God, for it is God who made us in his image. Satan and the things of death are directly against God's will. God said to Adam and Eve, if you eat from that fruit, this forbidden knowledge, you will surely die. God said, please don't eat from it. The devil says, please eat from this because I want you to die. The devil brought death to the world. The devil hates us. The devil brought sickness to the world. He breaks your body down. Destroys us each and every day. Tries to kill our faith. Steal our joy. Destroy our bodies. Kills, steals, and destroys. Everything God is, the devil is the opposite of. Jesus Christ says, I'm life, and I bring life. Everybody who loves Jesus Christ loves life. That's the thing. Once we realize that we are the holy temple of the living God, and Jesus Christ lives in us, the only way to love God is to love each other. The only way to find God is through our love, because it is our love for one another that gives us the faith to wake up and the hopes to see you one more time. Right? I don't want to see a grouchy, ugly, nasty person who's going to beat me down and abuse me. No, I want to see you, because you love me. And it gives me great hope and joy, and, and that's the thing I want you to remember. That. Don't put your hope and faith in a man, but, but in God, Jesus Christ, who will never fail you, never leave you, never forsake you. All right? I, this is what he says, I promise the devil hates you so much because you're my kid. He's going to rain fire on you, but don't be afraid. Hey, I promise the devil hates you so much because you're my child. He's going to come and try and break your body and destroy it. But don't be afraid. Don't lose your hope and don't give up. You know, a true sign of the spirit of the living God living with you is when you're broken in a wheelchair, never to walk again, yet you can laugh. You can smile. And you can live in joy. Because that's the presence of the living God. Joy, happiness, gentleness, kindness, nurturing, love, compassion, patience. Let's read Psalm 18. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be to the Lord. I exclaim, I am, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. You know, that's the thing sometimes we, we we're healed, we're good, I'm safe from all my enemies. All the depression, all the sadness, and all that stuff is gone. I am free, I'm healed. Yeah, I'm in a broken body, but in this broken body, I can feel the glory of God living in me. And I have no limits because in my heart I am walking. In my faith I am walking. In my love, I rejoice. Right? do all this in the face of your enemies. Sometimes our enemies are, are those who come to hurt our faith. You can't walk because your faith isn't strong enough. No, I can sit here with joy because my faith is mightier than your whole able body. Right? Right. My faith is so strong I can walk through the fire of hell. And not to be consumed. I will not be consumed by negativity. I will not be consumed 
by my pain. I will be not consumed by this world or your lack of faith. Because God is with me. And he strengthens me. And he's my refuge. And in him I find all peace, love, and hope. Right? The breakers of death surge around me. The destroying floods overwhelm me. The cords of the needle world enmeshed me. The snares of death overtook me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. I cried out to my God for his temple. He heard my voice. And my cry to him reached his ears. Right? I was laying there in bed crying for many months. Then I cried out to my God, my father. And all of a sudden a little birdie came and began to feed me. With love, with care. Then pretty soon I had a little hope that, that you'd come back again. Because it was nice. I enjoyed it. Pretty soon I not only had the faith and the hope that you'd come back, I knew you were going to come back. Because I believed God was now with me. And you say, well, I thought God was six foot tall with fire blowing out his eyeballs, farting, you know, uh, fireballs from heaven. No. He came in a little, my little friend. And couldn't barely recognize him. But every morning, tapped me on the shoulder. Would you like me to comb your hair? Would you like me to get a shower? Would you like me to help you get dressed? That's the thing God comes to us in many forms. Many forms. But there's one thing that God never contradicts. The spirit of love. That spirit of love. Right? It says, The earth swayed and quaked. The foundations and the mountains trembled and shook when his wrath flared up. Smoke rose from his nostrils. And a devouring fire from his mouth kindled coals into flames. And he inclined to the heavens and came down with dark clouds under his feet. Right? That's the thing. Remember Jesus, he's going to return. Right? I'm going to return one day in the clouds. And all the angels are coming with me. And you say, what does that look like? <laughs> okay, his brightness and his brilliance is so bright, so brilliant, so awesome. In the clouds, in your suffering, in your rain, in that day when you're on your bed crying out, oh God, why did you make me? In that cloud of witnesses, in that cloud of sorrow, he shows up. Hey, if I came to you and when, when things were going well, it would be so bright. <laughs> it would just melt you away. So I had to come in a covering, uh, a covering, you know, so that my brightness wouldn't blow you away. Right? In that worst moment in my darkest spot, when, when I was saying, how in the heck could God make me? live in this painful world, in a broken body. He shows up in, in a mighty way and he says, because you're my daughter and I love you. Just think of the glory of God's grace that's waiting for us. You know, sometimes in, in people who are broken or crippled have many uh, helpers and people to help them, take care of them. It's because you're a queen of God. No queens have many servants. Right? Well, what's to come? This is just a, 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 a reflection, a, an image, a mirror image of that which is to come. Hey, and he says, hey, you're, 
You're, you're like queen of God. You're like the bride of Christ. You're like my wife. And I gave you all these servants and all these people to take care of you every day because you're my wife. Now though this world may see you as broken and, and small, I see you as being worthy to be taken care of each and every day, says God. And then we come to find out, oh, you mean I was broken because I have a greater gift than all those who are walking around with dead legs and a dead body? You mean I get to experience every morning somebody's care? And somebody's love, and it's not just somebody's care and love, but the care and the love of the almighty creator of, of all things. <laughs> Ain't that amazing? Of all things, the creator of the universe. Says you're so special, you're so awesome. I want to marry you. I want you to be my bride. And just so you know that, that you are my bride, I'm going to send all these servants and angels around you, and they're going to take care of you through that darkness, through that pain. That's our God. I'm going to take you through it. I'm going to get you out of it. I'm going to deliver you in it. i got to come into it to deliver you out of it. I'm going to live in you, in that broken house, with you. And we will come out of it, full-bodied, never to be hurt again. And you say, when? Yeah, God only knows. <laughs> God only knows. Be ready. Be ready. Now, goes on to say, He mounted the cherubim and flew, borne on the wings of the wind. And he made darkness the cloak about him. Dark mist, rain clouds, his wrath. From the brightness of his presence, coals were kindled to flame. And the Lord thundered from heaven. The Most High gave forth his voice. He sent forth his arrows to put them to flight. With frequent lightnings, he routed them. Then the bed of sea appeared. The foundations of the world were laid bare at the rebuke of the Lord. You say, wow, that sounds like God's all mad. No, no, no. His daughter cried out for help. And that's the thing, Jesus Christ living in you cried out to God, said, God, our Father, come and help me. My daughter, my child, she's hurting. And when that prayer hit God's ears, like a mighty thunder, all of a sudden God wakes up and what? My daughter's hurt. My, we got a problem down here. Who touched my kid? I'm on my way like a mighty warrior to defend you, to help you, to deliver you. What's going on? Who touched my kid? Right. That's God. I go like a mighty warrior with, with a lightsaber of Luke Skywalker. I'm going to devour the enemy. I'm going to devour them unfaithful people. How dare them challenge your faith? I know you. You're the most powerful woman there is. I chose you. Says the Lord our God. Power doesn't come from might. But the stature of our bodies. It comes by our faith and our willingness to cry out. For help. Even when we thought we couldn't get no help. Like a mighty warrior, God comes to, to rebuke and, and blast the waters away. My tears, God, you know, God is going to wipe away every tear one day. At his rebuke, I'm going to take that water and I'm going to dry it up. At God's rebuke, he will put death to Satan and his lies. He reached out from on high and grabbed me. 
This is hey, you ever felt like th this prayer came from you? I tell you the truth that the living God has fulfilled this in our lifetime. This has been fulfilled. And I met the person who cried out this cry. And God answered her. I'm a witness. I'm honored to know you. I'm honored to know you. They know you. They know your name. And they speak of you in heaven. Sometimes we think these broken people are, are in bad shape. I think us able-bodied people are in bad shape, and they're okay. They're okay. Right? Says he reached out from on high and grasped me. He drew me out of the deep water. He drew me out of the depression. With the mighty giant hand, no, with my little broken friend. He, he was amazing. Like this little mouse came in and just picked me right off the ground. <laughs> little mighty mouse. That's God. I, I used the small to do great things. You, know, you want to find the best fish in town? town? You go to the guy who owns a, a fishing store and is sitting in a wheelchair. <laughs> Because the almighty power of God can go anywhere. Even to that secret hole, man. Didn't you know God was uh, men of fishermen? <laughs> he loved fishing. Right? Sometimes we think we're not allowed to ever speak words. But did you know Peter was a sailor? I wonder. <laughs> so, at the Lord's rebuke, at the blast of the wind of a 